Well, hey everyone, good evening. I hope you had a good day. My name is Kate Watt. I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist with the Cone Health Live Life Well team. Uh, so I'm excited to share a couple recipes with you tonight for healthy holidays, which is our theme this month. And so we're gonna go over some really quick and easy recipes for healthy holiday appetizers. Um, they are gonna incorporate some vegetables, lots of color, and they're really super easy to make, but they look very gourmet. So I feel like it's a great thing to take to gatherings um, and just kind of show off what you can do. So let's go ahead and jump in. We are gonna start with our first recipe, which is the Caprice Skewers with Balsamic Glaze. So this recipe is really more of an assembly style recipe, meaning you don't have to cook anything. In fact, you don't even need a knife for this recipe. So what you are gonna need are some fresh great tomatoes. Um, so I have gone for the ones with the vine and I've gone ahead and rinsed these off. Um, and so I'm gonna take a few of them off the vine and make a nice little pile here. What I'm gonna do is just kind of get everything together where I need it and then assemble it onto the skewers. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that first step of the recipe. Now, the other thing you're gonna need are some small balls of fresh mozzarella. So my store um, calls them cheese pearls. <laughs> and so they just come in a little package like this. Now we're gonna make a seasoning to flavor these um, and you can buy them already flavored as well, and it will be very similar. Um, but what we're gonna do is just mix a few things in a bowl, dump them in, and skewer them up. The recipe also calls for fresh basil uh, leaves, and if you just have chopped basil, that's fine too. You can add it into our marinade we're gonna make. Um, it's surprisingly, even though I chose this recipe, I'm not a huge basil fan, so I'm actually gonna be using cilantro. And it's something I also already had on hand. I was gonna buy basil for demonstration purposes, but my store didn't have fresh basil leaves. They only have the chopped basil. And I thought, I like the look of the whole leaf on the skewer. So I'm just gonna use the cilantro I have. And I think it tasted great when I tried it earlier. So we're just gonna go with that. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and again, you're gonna rinse your tomatoes and get a few of those lined up. Now we're gonna make our uh, marinade. And so this is really simple. It's going to be olive oil and some spices. So let me grab my recipe here up to the side and make sure. Um, I typically do not really measure uh, when it comes to spices. Um, now with oils though, because it's such high calorie, I do like to measure out what the recipe calls for, or sometimes use even less if I think I can get away with a little bit less and still get the flavor that I need. And so um, I like these dispensers because it just allows a little bit of oil to come out at a time. And then of course, with our spices and herbs, those are great ways to enhance flavor and add different flavor profiles. So totally change a dish just by changing the spices. Um, and it means that we don't have to use as much salt or fat or sugar to flavor the dish. So with herbs and spices, I go the other direction. I tend to overuse um, and add a little bit more extra pinch, extra sprinkle than what the recipe calls for, um, because that's just my preference. I really like the, the flavorful punch of those seasonings. So this calls for one and a half tablespoons of olive oil. So I do have a tablespoon here. So there's one tablespoon, and then I'm gonna do about half. I do have a half tablespoon, but again, I tend to eyeball a lot um, with measuring. And then with our Seasoning a teaspoon for our seasoning. So I'm gonna add that. And then we're gonna do a little bit of salt and pepper to taste. And so that means go with what you and your family um, typically enjoy. So for us, that means not too much salt. And for me, that means a lot of pepper. <laughs> So I've got my salt and pepper here. We're just gonna do a small pinch of salt. 
and then a little, excuse me, a little bit larger pinch of pepper here. Okay, perfect. So now we're just gonna, I mean, that's, that's it. It's just oil and spices. We're gonna mix it up. See that. And so I just use an Italian seasoning blend like the recipe calls for, but parsley would be good in here, oregano, um, thyme, if you like, rosemary, you could add extra basil, um, but we're going, the recipe is going for that classic caprice flavors, which is the mozzarella, the tomatoes, and the basil. I'm just going to break these apart gently because they will crumble on you, and we're going to put them on a skewer, so you want the nice little cute mozzarella ball. I'm going to gently pull these apart. And again, you can buy these at the grocery store already um, marinated in oil and spices if you prefer, but uh, this is so simple. Um, and this way you can personalize it and kind of control what exactly is going into that. And again, I'm using an extra virgin olive oil, typically is just the best for dressings, marinades, when you're doing something fresh um, and not cooking it, um, that tends to really be kind of the chef's choice, if you will. So I did wash my hands thoroughly before this. <laughs> I hope you did too if you're cooking along with me. Very important. We're not dealing with any raw meats or anything like that, um, eggs or anything tonight, but obviously I'm, I'm using my hands in the recipe, so want to make sure we're clean. So now we've got a nice coated mozzarella ball. I'm going to rinse my hands. And we are going to skewer these up. So I've got a nice little plate here. Something kind of fancy to dig for it in this kitchen. I've got a three and a half year old and a three month old. So we don't pull out the glass dishes very often. So I've got my toothpicks here. You can get the fancy ones with the little twirly cue at the top. Um, you could also get uh, like holiday themed skewers or toothpicks. If you wanted to do long skewers, you could absolutely just alternate these. So going with your mozzarella cheese ball, your basil leaf, and then your tomato, and then continue that pattern down your skewer until it's full um, and make longer versions of this. So I'm just gonna do a few of these. So again, I like to do the cheese. Oh, that toothpick's broken. I like to do the cheese first, then my fresh, in my case, cilantro, but basil leaf. And so the basil leaves or cilantro, um, I would rinse and pack dry, um, but then you can just pull it right off the stem. Oh, that's two cheese balls, guys. It's the end of the day, right? <laughs> so how cute are these little skewers? And they're a fancy name, right? What are you bringing? I'm bringing Capri skewers with balsamic glaze, <laughs> which we'll get to in just a second. And um, I also love these for Christmas time. If you do celebrate Christmas as your holiday this time of year, what a beautiful way to bring in those bright green and red colors into a dish. So very, um, uh, perfect for Christmas time, I think. Okay, let me just do a couple more of these and then we're gonna add the best part. I'm telling you guys, these are good on their own, but really don't skip on the balsamic glaze. It is just so delicious. Mm. So our, you know, healthy holidays theme, we're wanting to use fresh whole foods. Um, so even if there's a few, you know, high calorie things, cheese and oil, we are really incorporating just fresh whole ingredients in really simple ways and we want it to taste good <laughs> so that people want to consume the vegetable dishes that we have alongside our more um, traditional starchy favorites and desserts and things like that. So it's just nice to have that balance 
And as a dietitian, you know, people expect certain things, I guess, when I'm around my family or friends for holidays. And I have to remember that, you know, I'm just a normal human too, guys. And I went into this because I love food and I love talking about food. And I think it's amazing what food does for our bodies. Um, so we talk about moderation, we talk about balance, right? But I think for me as a dietitian, what I really try to get across is that if we're going to eat healthy, it's still going to taste good because that's how we're wired, right? We're wired to get pleasure and enjoyment out of our food. Okay. So here's my little stack of, and you can, you know, line it up on your plate however you want. There's my little stack of skewers. You can, you know, stand them up, I would think, if you got the right kind of um, grape tomato. These are pretty round, <laughs> so I'm going to leave them laying down. So now we're going to take this balsamic glaze and just give it a nice little drizzle. over the top. So it's thick. It's thicker than a regular balsamic vinegar. It is made with um, the balsamic vinegar um, and you can get all different kinds of fancy ones, but this is just a thicker glaze. So it looks really pretty and it tastes delicious and it just takes a little bit. It'll go a long way. This will last me forever. <laughs> So that's our first appetizer, uh, Capri skewers. I'm gonna put these to the side. We're gonna do our second recipe and then we'll add um, that on here and we'll taste it at the end, I think, okay? All right, so next up is our stuffed mushrooms. And so first thing, if you are cooking along is you're gonna wanna preheat your oven. So I've already got mine preheated to 400 degrees. So go ahead and set yours there now. Um, and then we're going to use these button mushrooms. And, and if you haven't already, you also want to wash these really well. So mushrooms tend to have a lot of dirt and grime on them. See a little bit of mist here. So you can certainly rinse them off, but you don't want to soak mushrooms um, because, again, we don't want mushy, wet mushrooms when our recipe is completed. <laughs> So we are going to want to definitely make sure that we just do a quick rinse, dry them really good, drain them really good. If you want to, you can skip the water altogether and just do a nice paper towel dry, um, dry rub on them. Or a vegetable brush is a good option too. So once we've done that, we are going to remove the stems from our mushrooms. So let me grab my knife here. I'm going to use a smaller chef's knife instead of a really large, you know, you could large chef's knife. Typically, you want to choose a knife that matches the size of your produce. Um, so these are much smaller compared to, say, like a sweet potato or a, a spaghetti squash or something like that. And I'm going to be kind of uh, almost like coring them, if you would, instead of slicing. So I want something nice and small to be able to do that. Um, so the way that I prefer to get a stem out is to kind of go around in a circle like so, and then I'm cutting in and at an angle so that I can kind of just pop that stem out with my knife. So I'm trying not to slice the side too bad, and I want to get a little bit of a hole inside of my mushroom so that I can fill it up with that good filling we're going to make. But it doesn't need to be very deep because we're actually going to kind of pile it um, up on top. So with our stems, we are going to chop those up and use them in the filling. So for, for this cutting technique, we're going to use the claw, which is a safety method. We're going to bring our fingers in and hold on to our item, moving our fingers back as we chop so that we are less likely to cut ourselves. <laughs> and if you're new with knife skills, um, just go really slow. Just, you know, you don't have to be all fancy right off the bat. Just go at your own pace. Um, and I'm just doing a really rough chop. I'm not doing anything fancy. Of course, you can buy little gadgets and gizmos if you want a really sharp um, or tiny and precise cut. Um, another thing you could do with these is actually use a cheese grater and grate the stems so that they are um, really finely 
a cut up. So we're gonna just do a few of these. The other thing that I would say about um, these mushrooms, because we're gonna be baking them in the oven, I would recommend kind of picking out mushrooms that are about the same size when we go to put them on our baking sheet so that they'll all cook sort of evenly. Because in my pack of mushrooms, at least, I've got you know mushrooms this size and mushrooms more like this size. And that's kind of a big difference with you know cooking them in the oven. So I'm gonna go for the bigger ones <laughs> so that we can stuff more in there. And again, I'm just very gently, you know, popping those stems out. If you're if you're hesitant about using a knife to do that, um, you could absolutely use even a spoon because again, mushrooms are not that hard to cut. Um, they're very, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? They're spongy. <laughs> so you could even use a spoon if you're more comfortable doing it that way. Okay, so let's do a couple more of these and then we are going to get the caps. These would be the caps on a baking sheet while we do our filling which we're gonna do on the stove. Okay. Let me know if y'all have questions. Um, mushrooms are one of my favorite foods and oddly enough, when I was a kid, they were one of my most disliked foods. So if you're trying to eat more vegetables, one of my tips I use with clients all the time is to uh, just be adventurous. Visualize yourself as an adventurous eater. If you're around a food that you haven't tried in a while that you didn't like maybe when you were a kid, be willing just to try one bite because our taste buds change about every five to seven years. And so, you know, as adults, we all can think of foods that we did not like as a kid that we do like now. Um, but if it's a food we disliked as an adult, we sometimes refuse to try it again down the line, um, but you really can surprise yourself. I mean, as an adult, I didn't like mustard. I didn't like olives and now I do. And it just took kind of trying them and finding the right kinds that I like. There are still certain types of both of those things I don't like. Um, and sometimes there's things you don't like prepared a certain way and then you try it prepared a different way and you like it. So. Be willing to try new foods. And that's why I like taking things like this to gatherings. And, you know, I'm not scared to be the person that brings vegetables to a party. A vegetable tray with ranch, I am fine with that. But this is a little bit of that next step up for the holidays. And it's just, it's fun because I feel like it gives people a chance who maybe are in that boat. Oh, I wish I ate more vegetables, but I just don't like them. It gives them a chance to try something without them having to buy it and prepare it on their own. So. I am totally okay being that person bringing vegetables to the party. <laughs> so let's get our baking sheet. And I'm just gonna put these six caps on our baking sheet and then put them aside. We're gonna get our filling ready and then we're gonna fill them up. Uh, we're gonna top them and we're gonna throw them in the oven. Let me put these over here. I'm gonna go ahead and start my pan. Uh, so we wanna heat some oil in the pan. So we're gonna go to medium high and we're going to put a tablespoon of oil into the pan and you want that to heat up before you add in your items um, just so it's easy you know it's going to cook quicker if we allow it to go ahead and get heated up okay. and now we're going to work on the filling so we're going to cook our um, mushroom caps as well as Spice the meat, be my parsley. We're going to add in um, some breadcrumbs, some garlic, and some spices uh, from the recipe. So let's do our garlic and go ahead and add it in the bowl. And by then, our oil will be hot and we'll dump it all in. Okay. So for garlic, we've got uh, a clove of garlic here. And we're just going to do one. excuse me, bulb of garlic, clove of garlic. So we just need one section of this bulb when we see clove in the recipe. Oh, and I've got to show you all this really cool cutting board I have. So 
With the stems, I didn't need it because we're using them in the recipe, but I love this cutting board. It's got a little trash dispenser here so that when you're cutting, if you do have things you're throwing away, like the wrapper of the scarlet, you just push it to the side and my little tray can connect, uh, collects the scraps and I can throw that away later. So I love to keep my kitchen tidy when I cook. So I think that's a great little feature. So really fun little cutting board. All right, so a few different ways to get your garlic in this recipe. So one is to get your fresh clove and I tend to mash it with the back of my knife because there's this peeling, the skin on it that you want to take off. So I'm going to peel off that outer layer. And you'll know when the skin is gone because the texture on your fingers is going to change. The skin is that really uh, slick um feeling whereas when you get down to the clove it's stickier it's like a waxy texture on your fingers so you know you've got all the skin gone then i'm just going to cut this little end piece here where it connects to the bulb and now we can chop up our garlic so you can do it with your knife just a quick chop a little mint or you can get a fun little gadget like this where you take your bulb and you place it inside and then as you mash it, you're gonna see the, it's gonna really mince that garlic up extra small. Takes a little wrist strength here, a little hand grip strength. <laughs> so as it comes out, there you go. Nice minced garlic clove. We're just gonna scoop that in with our stems, mushroom stems. And then of course, Another way to get your minced garlic would be to buy it already minced. And this is one of my favorite hats for the kitchen because I cook with garlic all the time. There are definitely people out there that prefer the fresh garlic. Let me know if that's you. But if you're not that particular, I love just a good jar of minced garlic. This lasts you forever. And it's so easy just to plop into your recipes. So we're going to take just our stems and our garlic and go ahead and add that to our hot pan. And I've got a really large pan just so I can spread it out and really get them to cook quickly and also so that the water from those mushrooms will evaporate much better and much quicker because I've spread it out. I'm just going to soak up that oil, evaporate out that water. And another um, tip for these baked mushrooms or roasted mushrooms is to make sure that you cook these stems long enough to get rid of that excess water. Because again, we don't want the mushy um, mushrooms, okay? <laughs> okay, so we're gonna let those keep going and then we're going to add in our panko breadcrumbs. I'm a big fan of panko breadcrumbs. And we're gonna add in some grated Parmesan cheese. Now I bought mine already grated but this is freshly grated from the deli, or you could get a block of Parmesan and freshly grate it. This is gonna make a big difference versus um, the pre-grated Parmesan cheese that you can buy. You know what I mean? Comes in a cylinder with a green top, right? <laughs> so um, I really would say go splurge a little bit on your Parmesan cheese uh, for this recipe. And then we're gonna add in our spices. So fresh chopped parsley. Again, I spent a little bit extra and got mine already chopped just to make it quick. And then I've got my fresh thyme here that we're gonna add. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a few of these off the stems. Thyme is really easy when it comes to just going in the opposite direction, lightly brushing your fingers down and getting those leaves off of the stem. Many herbs and spices, when you buy them fresh like this, you can still eat the stems, just chop them up along with the leaves and they're perfectly edible and fine. For some people, and I'm kind of one of them, <laughs> I don't like the texture of that in my food. So um, I prefer to kind of just spend a little extra time and get my little extra time on my time. Okay, <laughs> bad pun, bad pun. 
All right, so I'm not going to use too much of that, just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and give my mustard a stir. I'm going to add in my panko. And that needs to toast for just an extra minute. How y'all doing? Uh, yes, if the recipe calls for one clove of minced garlic, how much of the garlic in the jar should be used? So the nice thing is these all are gonna have that information right on the jar for you. Typically it is one teaspoon of minced garlic for each clove of garlic. Great question. Make sure I didn't miss any other questions here. Awesome. All right, so let's add in our Parmesan. And what I'm gonna do here is turn off the heat for a second. We're gonna add in, um, I didn't add in our salt and pepper, so I'm gonna do that quickly. Okay. A bit of pepper. And what's kind of weird about this recipe is now you're going to add your cream cheese <laughs> right into that pan. Sounds weird. Um, it's going to make a, a thick filling for our mushrooms. So I'm just going to squeeze mine right in here. Trying to use my spoon here. And so you do want it to melt down um, a little bit. And then you're going to want to take it off the heat. So I'm just kind of mashing it together as I'm going. I'm just kind of getting all the spices and mushrooms incorporated into that cream cheese. I'm adding my other spices now. So again, we just, to the filling, added salt, pepper, parsley, and thyme. I'm gonna take this off the heat and just continue to stir it and get it incorporated into that filling. Okay, let me show you what we're working with here. Weird, right? But we're just gonna scoop it into our mushrooms now. So, um, and it's gonna taste really good. So I'm going to bring back my tray of mushrooms here. And what we're going to do is just, let's see, I want you to be able to do this. So move things, move things around real quick. Get a pot holder here. Okay, so we're going to take, I found that a um, measuring utensil, like a really tiny one, tends to work best. So I'm just going to use my little teaspoon here, and we're going to pile this into our caps. And you kind of want to push them down in there because we're going to actually pick up the mushrooms and dip them into our panko and Parmesan mixture that we're about to make just to get that nice crusty coating on top um, as they bake in the oven. Okay. So the other nice thing about mushrooms is they're really hearty for a vegetable and they are a great meat replacement as well. So for someone that's trying to eat less meat, um, mushrooms are a great way to get that meaty, savory, comforting flavor. Um, and again, they just, they really fill you up. So they're a great uh, choice for this time of year where we want something a little bit heartier. And if we're, you know, doing more vegetarian style dishes, I think mushrooms are such a great choice. Okie doke. 
So now we're just going to, in a little bowl, combine a little bit of that same panko and Parmesan. Just to dip the top. Okay. Give that a stir. And then we're going to take each little mushroom cap, dip it in there, push it down, and get a nice, beautiful crust. <laughs> that are going to toast up really nice in the oven. Now, to be honest, uh, if you want a little bit more meltier, ooey gooey filling, I would add some uh, fresh grated mozzarella cheese to this as well. And you know, that's gonna be a little bit more meltier when you pull these out of the oven. These are gonna be just that nice um, crust uh, with the Parmesan flavor in them. All right, let's see, what type of mushrooms are you using? So these are just the um, baby Bella mushrooms, but really any mushrooms would be fine. Uh, you may have to play around with how to get them dry enough um, in the oven so that they're not mushy when they come out, um, but really any kind of mushroom would work for this as long as it's uh, large enough to hold that filling. See any other questions here? Okay, awesome. So now we're just gonna pop these in the oven. And the recipe says that we're gonna do this for 20 minutes. So I'm gonna set my timer, 20 to 22 minutes. Now, TV magic, I've already got some made for you. <laughs> so here are our beautiful stuffed mushrooms. Oh, I did not do this step <laughs> with the ones I just did. The recipe says to spray with cooking spray on top, which I did, which is why you see the <laughs> excess there. And so that's going to get it nice and crispy. So don't forget that step like I did. You want to top the um, mushroom caps with the cooking oil, or excuse me, the cooking spray before you toss them in the oven. So we're going to plate these up as well. Got my tongs here, got my Capri skewers. I'm gonna put our mushrooms on here. Now the mushrooms, you know, they could use a little razzle dazzle. <laughs> I'm plating them here with these colorful skewers, but personally, if you, you know, find some kind of decorative toothpick for the holidays, that would be great. Or just use a really pretty colorful dish. And that way your guests see a little more color when they're reaching for those mushrooms, all right? So that's all I have for you. Let me get those on display here so you can see the final product. Again, this is going to be posted on the Live Life Well YouTube page. So be sure to go back, watch the recipe again there. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. How did yours turn out? And happy holidays to everyone. Thanks for joining me.